Now then, it's Nick again at the Don't Tell Show. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Wrestler. The Wrestler is directed by Darren Aronofsky. 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 His fourth film. So Aronofsky had been known up to this point for making very flash, very um, in-your-face sort of films like Pie and Requiem for a Dream and The Fountain, which wasn't it wasn't as much in your face, but it was what he was out there. It was what he was out there. It was a pretty crazy film. Um, so it's, it was quite wild to, for the wrestler to come out and for it to start with this shot, because it, especially from the person who had previously given us these. But what I love about this shot is that people have pointed out a lot that he's sat in the corner on his own and he looks lonely and that's the introduction to the character but it isn't just that it's what it reminds me of that that quote the um and when I became a man I left behind childish things because a lot's made about how he's sat in the corner on his own but not that he's clearly in a primary school <laughs> surrounded by toys and stuff like this guy he's a, he's a washed up wrestler he's still playing with toys and he hasn't moved on with his life and that's how he that's how he chose to introduce the character in this film and i feel like there's more there's more character in that one shot than there were in, in these previous three films because they were so reliant on visuals and that there, and there really, it really isn't anything going on in there and people say that requiem for a dream is a really dark depressing film and i just didn't give a shit because the, the characters are so thin and, and they're just i don't i don't know them i don't like them i don't care the film just amounts to a load of MTV cuts, and music video style theatrics and drugs are bad, MK. It didn't get anything from that, but like from the opening shot of, of The Wrestler, you just think, who is this guy? Why is he sat like that? Why is he wasting his life? And there's also like the, the realism. For some reason, the realism it becomes more because you, because it seems to echo part of Mickey Rock's life because it's, a, it's about an aging wrestler who's trying to get back into the big time. He's waiting for this big break. So he can he can go back to WWE or whatever. I can't remember if they refer to it as that in the film. And Mickey Rock did that as well. He was really big in the eighties and through the nineties, and then he went off. He went off. He didn't sort of go off the rails, but he went off and became a boxer. And um, he was a good boxer by all accounts. But then he came back to acting, and this was sort of this was his chance to make it back into the big time. I'm not sure if he did actually or not, but he should have <laughs> if he didn't, because the. the this this is Darren Aronofsky. He's, he's been he's been excited, I guess. I guess he'd entered the film industry. He was doing quite well for himself. He was excited and he was like, "I want to do everything. I want to do everything all at once." And then, and then he must have had sort of a period of, of reflection where where he was like, "No, maybe I don't. Maybe I need to take all of that away and go back to this raw, this pure sort of cinema where the whole the whole film is centered around this performance and the camera. The camera. I mean, he's he's not." You can sort of look at this and think that the camera isn't doing anything, but it is. Like he he clearly knows what he's doing. He's just not showing you that. He's letting everything else at the front and the sort of mechanics of it have gone behind the scenes, sort of. So what what you get is is just Mickey Rock bearing his heart on screen for the whole film, and it's pretty amazing. I really love this film. It blew me away when it first came out, and that that ending, and the Bruce Springsteen song. <sighs> Yeah, it was just it was amazing. Like every, everything about it was sort of surprising. The, the the parallels the parallels between Mickey Rock Mickey Rock and and this character, the realism, the way he pulled that off, the way he brought everything out of it. He apparently rewrote all of his dialogue because he didn't think a wrestler would talk like that. And it kind of tells about it, the, imp the sort of improvised scenes in there. You can tell that they feel real. And there's there's bits where he's on the deli counter that are actually real. They are real customers that he's chucking coleslaw at for a laugh. So it all just comes across that way. Feel it feels very real, and it really gets you. It really gets you. Because I think we all have a bit of that in us. We all, we all like hold on to things that we probably should have let go of. Oh yeah, that brilliant, brilliant film, The Wrestler. If you haven't seen it and you're into that gritty sort of thing, which you better be on this channel because that's all we're going to talk about. <laughs> that's all. All this channel is going to be about from now on is is raw, pure, gritty cinema. So The Wrestler, check it out if you can find it. I found it in a charity shop recently for a quid to rewatch it, so it's out there, it's easy to find. Check it out. <sighs>